Hello everyone. Today's my lecture is on functions and applied aspects of basal ganglia. So basal ganglia that forms the part of the extra pyramidal system which is concerned with the integration and regulation of motor activities. So first of all the functions of basal ganglia is control of muscle tone. In fact the gamma motor neuron of the spinal cord that are responsible for the development of the tone in the muscles. Basal ganglia that decreases the muscle tone by inhibiting gamma motor neurons through the descending inhibitory reticular system in the brain stem. Now during the lesion of the basal ganglia the muscle tone increases and leading to rigidity. Then control of motor activity in which there is a regulation of voluntary movements, regulation of conscious movement and regulation of subconscious movements. So first of all the regulation of voluntary movements. So movements during the voluntary motor activity that are initiated by cerebral cortex. However, these movements are controlled by basal ganglia and which are in close association with the cerebral cortex. Now during the lesion of the basal ganglia, the control mechanism is lost and so the movements becomes inaccurate and awkward. Basal ganglia control the motor activities because of the neuronal circuit between the basal ganglia and other parts of the brain involved in motor activity and the neuronal circuits arise from the three areas of the cerebral cortex which and that which we have already discussed in previous lecture thalamus part 1. So neuronal circuits that arises from the premotor area primary motor area and supplement, supplementary motor area. All these now fibers from the cerebral cortex reach the caudate nucleus and from the caudate nucleus the fibers go to the putamen and some of the fibers from the cerebral cortex go directly to the putamen also and putamen sends the fibers to the globus pallidus and fibers from the globus pallidus run towards the thalamus subthalamic nucleus of Lewis and substantia nigra. Subthalamic nucleus and substantia nigra are in turn projected into the thalamus. Now the fibers from the thalamus are projected back into the primary motor area other two motor area are premotor area and supplementary motor area and these are the neuronal circuit of basal ganglia. Regulation of the conscious movement. So fibers between the cerebral cortex and caudate nucleus are concerned with the regulation of conscious movements. The functions of the basal ganglia is also known as cognitive control of activity. For example, when a stray dog barks at a man, immediately the person understands the situation and turns away and starts running. So that type of the function of the basal ganglia is known as cognitive control of activity and that is a regulation of conscious movements. Then the regulation of subconscious movement. So cortical fibers reaching the putamen are directly concerned with the regulation of some subconscious movements which take place during the trained motor activities like 
skilled activities such as writing the learnt alphabet, paper cutting, nail hammering, etc. Then the control of the reflex muscular activity. Some reflex muscular activities, particularly visual and labyrinthine reflexes, that are important in maintaining the posture. Basal ganglia are responsible for the coordination and integration of the impulses for these reflex activities. During the lesion of the basal ganglia, the postural movements, especially the visual and labyrinthine reflexes become abnormal. And these abnormal movements are associated with rigidity. And rigidity is because of the loss of the inhibitory influences from the cerebral cortex on the spinal cord via basal ganglia. And fourth function of the basal ganglia is control of automatic associated movements. Automatic associated movements are the movements in the body which take place along with some motor activities. For example, the swing of the arms while walking and appropriate facial expression while talking or doing any work. Basal ganglia are responsible for automatic associated movements. Then the lesion in the basal ganglia causes absence of these automatic associated movements and that results in poverty of movements. Face without appropriate expression while doing any work that is called mask like face. Body without associated movement is called statue like body. Then role in the aerosol mechanism. Globus pallidus and red nucleus are involved in aerosol mechanism because of their connection with reticular formation. Extensive lesion in the globus pallidus that causes drowsiness and that leads to sleep. Role of the neurotransmitters in the functions of basal ganglia. So functions of the basal ganglia on motor activities are executed by some neurotransmitters released by nerve endings within the basal ganglia. And there are certain neurotransmitters that are released in basal ganglia are dopamine, then gamma aminobutyric acid, acetylcholine, substance P, encephalins, noradrenaline and glutamic acids and from where they are released and what is its action. So first of all dopamine and that are released by fibers from the substantia nigra to corpus triatum and action is inhibition and GABA that released by intrinsic fibers of corpus triatum and substantia nigra action is inhibition then acetylcholine released by fibers from the cerebral cortex to caudate nucleus and putamen and action is excitation then substance p released by fibers from the globus pallidus reaching substantia nigra and action is excitation then encephalins that released by fibers from the globus pallidus reaching substantia nigra, action is excitation. Then noradrenaline released by fibers between the basal ganglia and reticular formation, action is excitation. Then glutamic acid that is released by fibers from the subthalamic nucleus to globus pallidus and substantia nigra, and action is excitation. So first of all dopamine that is released by dopaminergic fibers from the substantia nigra to corpus striatum, butamen and caudate nucleus, dopaminergic nigrostriatal fibers. So deficiency of the dopamine leads to Parkinsonism. Okay. So
this is the neuronal pathway that secrete different types of the neurotransmitter substances in the basal ganglia acetylcholine gaba so this is the dopamine that is released by dopaminergic fibers from substantia nigra from substantia nigra to corpus striatum okay so putamen and caudate nucleus okay so deficiency of the dopamine that leads to disease known as parkinsonism then gaba that is secreted by intrinsic fibers of corpus striatum and substantia nigra so this is the gamma amino butyric acid and that is secreted by intrinsic fibers of corpus striatum and substantia nigra then acetylcholine that is released by fibers from the cerebral cortex to codet nucleus a putamen then substance p released by fibers from the globus pallidus reaching the substantia nigra encephalins released by fibers from the globus pallidus reaching substantia nigra noradrenaline secreted by fibers between the basal ganglia and reticular formation glutamic acid secreted by fibers from subthalamic nucleus to globus pallidus and substantia nigra among these neurotransmitters dopamine and gamma amino butyric acid are inhibitory neurotransmitters so the fibers releasing dopamine and gaba are inhibitory fibers and all other neurotransmitters have excitatory functions now applied physiology air or disorders of basal ganglia so first of all we will discuss about parkinson's disease so parkinson disease is a slowly progressive degenerative disease of nervous system associated with destruction of brain cells which produce dopamine it is named after the discoverer james parkinson and this disease is also known as paralysis agitans great boxer mohammad ali is affected by parkinsonism because of repeated blows he might have received on the head and resulting in damage of the brain cell producing dopamine then this is a image of james parkinson he is famous for his 1817 work an essay on the shaking palsy in which described the clinical condition paralysis agitans for the first time a condition that was renamed later as parkinson's disease by jean martin charcot then what are the causes of parkinson disease that occurs due to lack of dopamine caused by damage of the basal ganglia it is mostly due to the destruction of substantia nigra and nigrostriatal pathway which has dopaminergic fibers and damage of the basal ganglia usually occurs because of the following causes like viral infection of the brain like encephalitis cerebral arteriosclerosis injury to basal ganglia and destruction or removal of the dopamine in basal ganglia it occurs mostly due to long term treatment with antihypertensive drugs like reserpine parkinsonism due to the drugs is known as drug induced parkinsonism and then unknown causes and that can occur because of the destruction of the basal ganglia due to some unknown cause 
and this type of the parkinsonism is known as idiopathic parkinsonism then what are the signs and symptoms of the parkinson disease it develops very slowly and the early signs and symptoms may be unnoticed for months or even for years often the symptoms start with a mild noticeable tremor in just one hand when the tremor becomes remarkable the disease causes slowing or freezing of the movements followed by rigidity so first of all most noticeable symptom is tremor in parkinson disease the tremor that occurs during the rest so it is known as resting tremor but it disappears while doing any work so it is called static tremor or resting tremor and it is called drum beating tremor as the movements are similar to beating a drum thumb moves rhythmically over the index and middle fingers these movements are also known as peel rolling movements so this following this animation that shows a patient who is experiencing a peel rolling tremor so thumb that moves rhythmically over the index and middle finger so these movements are known as peel rolling movement then slowness of the movements so over the time the movements start slowing down bradykinesia that is known as bradykinesia and it takes a long time even to perform a simple task gradually the patient becomes unable to initiate the voluntary activity akinesia or the voluntary movements are reduced that is known as hypokinesia and it is because of the hypertonicity of the muscles so people who express bradykinesia that have difficulty with both large movements such as getting up from a chair and small movements such as grasping something between two fingers so this lady that tries to catch this ball okay so there is a slowness of the movements and it is she is unable to catch this ball so there is a slowness of movement and that is known as bradykinesia then postural instability individuals with the parkinson's disease tend to lose postural reflexes which normally help them maintain an upright posture when moved without these reflexes it is very hard to remain upright especially if they are knocked off their feet along with the freezing of the gait postural instability results in many falls so doctors will often test for postural instability using a pull test in this test doctor will pull backward on their patient's shoulder and see if he or she is able to recover their balance by stepping backwards people with parkinson's disease who lack the postural reflexes have a difficult time regaining a balance and often begin to fall backwards during this test now this animation shows the normal response to the pull test where only one step is needed to regain balance followed by a man with severe postural instability who requires being caught to avoid a fall because he cannot regain his upright posture then freezing of gait so people with parkinson's disease who experiences a freezing of the gait often will start before moving 
as if their feet are glued to the floor and cannot be moved without great effort this may happen when attempting to initiate the movement such as taking a first step or in a variety of the unique situations such as in open or enclosed space or when trying to change the direction freezing can become very dangerous and frequently contributes to falls especially in patients with postural instability and these people are able to maintain the movement once it is achieved and will continue walking in a normal manner however some people may have difficulty achieving a normal gait and will often have a shuffling step as can be seen in the animation then rigidity normally the muscles should contract and stretch as they work to move but people with the parkinson's disease may find that the muscles cannot stretch as they should instead they will always remain contracted leaving the body stiff in addition to being inconvenient the rigid muscles can also becomes very painful most people with parkinson disease will maintain rigidity in their arms when they walk so the arms do not swing as they normally would the doctor may look for these symptoms when making a diagnosis so in this animation you can clear cut see that there is a rigidity in their arm then poverty of movements poverty of movements means the loss of all the automatic associated movements because of the absence of the automatic associated movements the body becomes statue like the face becomes mask like due to absence of appropriate expression like blinking of eye and smiling some people with parkinson's disease will maintain an emotionless mask like facial expression regardless of their real emotional responses this mask results from the patient's lack of the muscle control because of either bradykinesia rigidity or both since we all rely on the facial expression so much in general conversation and this symptom can be specially concerning for spouses family members and friends and there are other secondary symptoms that could show up in some cases of parkinson's disease but each situation is unique and some other secondary symptoms may include dystonia then rigid twisting movements of the body overall reduced ability to control both large and small muscle movements excessive drooling and sexual dysfunction so parkinson's disease there is a decreased facial mobility in this face there is a decreased facial mobility blunt expression and a mask like face may result with decreased blinking and that is a characteristic stare since the neck and upper trunk tend to flex forward and the patient seems to peer upward towards the observer facial skin becomes oily and drooling may occur so this is a lack of facial expression and there is a staring of eyes then emotional changes some people with parkinson's disease will maintain an emotionless mask like facial expression regardless of their real emotional responses and this mask results from the patient's lack of muscle control because of either bradykinesia rigidity or both since we all rely on facial expression so much in general conversation and this symptom can be specially concerning for family members and friends and there are other secondary symptoms that could show up in some cases of parkinson's disease but each situation is very unique 
and some other secondary symptoms may include dystonia then rigid twisting movement of the body overall reduced ability to control both large and small muscle movements excessive drooling and sexual dysfunction then speech difficulties it is normal for some speech difficulties begin to appear as the people age but people with parkinson's disease may experience issue with speaking that are beyond those that normally occur the voice comes across as very monotonous quiet and breathy and many people also have a slurred speech and these issues make communication very frustrating and sometimes overwhelming and it is thought that these issues arises from the bradykinesia and rigidity of throat and mouth then dysphagia in addition to speech difficulties issues with bradykinesia and rigidity of throat and mouth can create issue with swallowing individuals with the parkinson's disease may find it difficult to chew and swallow this phenomena is known as dysphagia or difficulty in swallowing the risk of the choking is much higher in patients with dysphagia so the people with parkinson's disease who experiences dysphagia must be careful when eating micrographia as the result of the bradykinesia and rigidity it is extremely difficult to perform fine motor movements such as writing micro Microphagia is the term used to describe handwriting and has become increasingly smaller and more cramped together and it is very commonly seen with parkinson's disease so this is a typical appearance of the parkinson's disease there is a stooped posture mask like facial expression forward tilt of trunk there is a rigidity of arm and forearm muscles flexed elbows and wrist then reduced arm swinging because there is a absence of associated movements there is a slightly flexed hip and knees there is a trembling of extremities then shuffling and short step gait these are all r clinical features so head bent forward tremors of head then mask like facial expression there is a excess salivation means drooling there is a rigidity of arm forearm then stoop posture then there is a also weight loss tremor are also present then akinesia means absence or poverty of normal movements loss of postural reflexes bone demineralization shuffling and propulsive gait then also self help devices to meet daily needs raised toilet seat these are the management how we can manage so drug therapy rehabilitation then client and family education then warm baths and massage to relax the muscle specific drug therapy bowel routine then there is a long handle comb and razor then exercise to loosen the joint structure the range of the motion exercise to prevent deformities then the treatment for the parkinson's disease so parkinson's disease is due to lack of dopamine caused by damage of dopaminergic fibers and it is treated by dopamine injection dopamine does not cross the blood brain barrier so another substance called levodopa that crosses blood brain barrier that is injected l dopa moves into the brain and it is converted into dopamine 
Since the L-dopa can be converted into dopamine in the liver and some side effects occur due to excess dopamine content in the liver and blood. So along with the L-dopa, another substance called carbidopa is also administrated. Carbidopa prevents the conversion of the L-dopa into dopamine and carbidopa cannot pass through the blood brain barrier. So, L-dopa moves into the brain tissue and it is converted into dopamine. Some symptoms of the Parkinson's disease such as a tremor are abolished by surgical destruction of basal ganglia or thalamic nuclei. Second is Wilson's disease. So, Wilson disease is an inherited disorder characterized by excess of the copper in the body tissue. It is also known as progressive hepatolenticular degeneration. This disease develops due to damage of the lenticular nucleus particularly putamen. In Wilson disease, the copper is deposited in the liver, brain, kidney and eyes. Copper deposits that causes damage of the tissue and the affected organs are stopped functioning. In addition to symptoms of the Parkinson's disease, liver failure and damage to the central nervous system are the most predominant effect of this disorders. Wilson disease is fatal if not treated earlier. So, Wilson's disease. So, copper accumulates in the liver, kidney, brain and eyes. Autosomal recessive disease of the copper metabolism. Young patients, symptoms of liver disease and older patients, neuropsychic symptoms. So, Kaiser Flesker ring, deposition of the copper in the cornea. So, this is a Kaiser Flesker ring. Then, neurologic symptoms. There are a tremor, emotional problems, difficulty with handwriting, dysarthria and Parkinsonism. In liver failure, there is a hepatomegaly, ascites and variceal bleeding. So, in investigation, then there is a low ceruloplasmin, low serum copper, most of the copper deposited in the tissue, then increased during copper and management, there is a chelation with penicillamine in low copper diet. So this is all about the Wilson's disease. Then chorea. So chorea is an abnormal involuntary movements. Chorea means rapid jerky movements. It mostly involves limbs. And chorea is due to lesion in the caudate nucleus and putamen. So, in this animation, you can see there is a rapid jerky movements and then it involves limbs and it is due to lesion in the caudate nucleus and putamen and that is a abnormal involuntary movements. Then athetosis. Athetosis is another type of the abnormal involuntary movement which refers to slow rhythmic and twisting movements. You can see very well slow rhythmic and twisting movements. You can see also clearly in this baby's movement and here also. So it is because of the lesion in the caudate nucleus and putamen. Then choreothetosis. Choreothetosis is the condition characterized by aimless involuntary muscular movements. It is due to combined effects of chorea and athetosis. You can see in this animation of this baby there is a aimless involuntary muscular movements and it is due to combined effects of chorea and athetosis.
then huntington's chorea so it is an inherited progressive neural disorders due to the degeneration of neurons secreting gamma amino butyric acid in corpus striatum and substantia nigra this disease starts mostly in the middle age and it is characterized by chorea hypotonia and dementia in severe cases bilateral wasting of the muscle occurs and it is otherwise known as huntington's disease chronic progressive chorea degenerative chorea or hereditary chorea so in this animation you can see there is a progressive neural disorders and it is a combination of chorea hypotonia and dementia and it mostly occurs in the middle age then hemibelismus hemibelismus is a disorder characterized by violent involuntary abnormal movements on one side of the body involving mostly the arm while walking the arm swings widely and these movements are known as flinging movements and these movements are due to the release phenomena because of the absence of the inhibitory influence on the movements hemibelismus occurs due to degeneration of subthalamic nucleus of lewis so this in, in this animation you can clearly see the violent involuntary abnormal movements of one side of the body mostly involving the arm then cornic terus so cornic terus is a form of brain damage in infants caused by severe jaundice basal ganglia are the mainly affected parts of the brain so in this image this one is a jaundice there is a yellowish color of the eyes and yellowish of the skin so the cause is excess bilirubin in the blood but this is a image of cornic terus so bilirubin moves from the blood stream into the brain tissue and that is deposited into the basal ganglia so in jaundice deposits in the skin and mucous membrane and uh, in acute bilirubin in cephalopathy unconjugated bilirubin deposits in the brain and in cornic terus there is a permanent neuronal damage because there is a deposition of the bilirubin in the basal ganglia The basal ganglia or basal nuclei is a structure located deep within the brain, and it's made up of a group of nuclei, so millions of nerve cell bodies. Put simply, the cerebral cortex decides how it wants to move the body and sends that input to the basal ganglia. And then the basal ganglia's job is to help execute a smooth movement. The basal ganglia are actually two pairs of deep structures, one on the left side and one on the right side of the brain. Each pair consists of the globus pallidus, which has the internal globus pallidus and the external globus pallidus, as well as the striatum, which includes the caudate nucleus and the putamen. The basal ganglia is linked to other brain structures, like the ventral anterior nuclei and the ventral lateral nuclei of the thalamus, as well as the substantia nigra of the midbrain. The basal ganglia can help start, stop, and control desired movements while also inhibiting undesired movements. As an example, when you walk, you have to move one leg at a time. So the basal ganglia helps one leg to step forward, while inhibiting the other leg, so that it's stationary, and that prevents you from falling. Additionally, the basal ganglia is involved in perception. Let's take a look at this picture as an example. You can either see a rabbit with its two long ears, or a duck with its beak. 
and you can choose which animal to see, but you can't see both simultaneously, because the basal ganglia stimulates the vision of one while it inhibits the vision of the other one. For this reason, the brain can only perceive one image at a time. For the basal ganglia to work, nearly the entire cerebral cortex projects onto the striatum. The striatum then projects onto the thalamus, and from there neurons head back to the cerebral cortex through two pathways, the direct pathway, which is excitatory, and the indirect pathway, which is inhibitory. So the direct pathway and indirect pathway have to be carefully balanced to control smooth movement. Now there are two main neurotransmitters involved in these pathways, the excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate and the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA. In the direct pathway, the cerebral cortex sends excitatory projections to the striatum. Then the striatum sends inhibitory projections to the internal globus pallidus. Then the internal globus pallidus sends inhibitory projections to the thalamus, which is usually in an active state. With this setup, if the striatum inhibits the internal globus pallidus, then the internal globus pallidus cannot inhibit the thalamus. The two negatives cancel out. As a result, the thalamus is free to send excitatory projections to the motor cortex, and this initiates voluntary movements. In the indirect pathway, the cerebral cortex sends excitatory projections to the striatum once again. But this time, the striatum sends inhibitory projections to the external globus pallidus, rather than the internal globus pallidus. Then the external globus pallidus sends inhibitory projections to the subthalamic nucleus, which are constantly active. Similar to before, the result is that if the striatum inhibits the external globus pallidus, then the external globus pallidus cannot inhibit the subthalamic nucleus. Once more, the two negatives cancel out. And as a result, the subthalamic nucleus is free to send excitatory projections out. It just so happens that the subthalamic nucleus sends its excitatory projections to the internal globus pallidus. This is in direct opposition to what happens in the direct pathway. By exciting the internal globus pallidus, it's able to inhibit the thalamus, which sends excitatory signals to the motor cortex. But the striatum also receives input from another brain structure, the substantia nigra, which releases a third neurotransmitter called dopamine into the striatum. Dopamine acts on both the direct and the indirect pathways, but with opposite effects due to the presence of two different receptors. D1 receptors, which are excitatory, and D2 receptors, which are inhibitory. D1 receptors are expressed by the striatal cells that project to the internal globus pallidus. When dopamine is released by the substantia nigra, it binds to D1 receptors, and that activates the direct pathway that controls the muscle you want to move. On the other hand, D2 receptors are expressed by the striatal cells that project to the external globus pallidus. When dopamine binds D2 receptors, they inhibit the indirect pathway for that same muscle. Ultimately, the action of dopamine on the striatum favors the excitatory projections to the motor cortex to reinforce the desired movements. In other words, if you were to add abnormally high levels of dopamine, the direct pathway for wanted movements becomes more active, and at the same time the indirect pathway for inhibiting unwanted movements becomes less active. As an example, individuals using cocaine or ecstasy often have enhancements of movements they want, like dancing at a rave, but they're less able to control unwanted movements like grinding their teeth. Alright, as a quick recap. The basal ganglia is made up of the striatum and the globus pallidus. The striatum receives input from the cerebral cortex about a desired movement, and then it sends output to the other basal ganglia structures through the direct and the indirect pathways. The direct pathway ultimately leads to activation of the thalamus, which then stimulates the motor cortex to initiate wanted movements. On the other hand, the indirect pathway ultimately leads to inhibition of the thalamus to inhibit undesired movements. So this is the list of reference book, Guyton, Gainong, Snell's Clinical Neuroanatomy and Textbook of Medical Physiology by Dr. Indu Khurana, 
then textbook of physiology by dr g k pal and textbook of anatomy of head and neck and brain by vishram singh and textbook of physiology by c c chatterjee and also from internet source thank you